Now, you didn't really think that we were only going to talk about diversity on our teams once or twice on this show. Oh, I beg to differ. Just like Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, the Terminator, I'll be back. Yeah, this is a topic that's going to come up time and time again, basically because it is so absolutely vital to not only the success of our companies, but also just as us as human beings. Y'all know how I feel about this. So I am really, really excited to kind of dig in again on the topic of having a diverse team. And I want to approach it today from a know, competitive advantage uh, perspective. I want to talk to you about the top three benefits that having a diverse team supporting your business actually makes. So go ahead and get cozy because as soon as we come back, we are going to dig into the three main benefits of having a diverse team. Hello, my friend, it's Tiana Tai, Team Dynamics Consultant and trained industrial organizational psychologist, helping you to become a better leader than your last boss. And right now, you are tuning in to the go-to podcast for entrepreneurs building and leading teams, hiring, onboarding, management, or maybe you just want some general advice about building your business. Well, let me assure you, you are in the right place. So go ahead, crack open a fresh notebook because you are listening to TIPOD. This episode is brought to you by Dream Hire Bootcamp. Whether you're hiring for the first time or the 14th time, your company will benefit from a strategic hiring method. I mean, what if finding your dream hire suddenly became, dare I say it, easy. That's right. DHB is your advanced hiring method to help you choose the right person for the right job, even if you've been burned by a bad hire before. We're talking the perfect integrator, business manager, executive assistant, or even marketing director for your company, all without the overwhelm and drama that usually accompanies some messy hiring. It's definitely possible. Just head to tianatai.com slash DHB to learn more. Alrighty, so let's get into it, shall we? Because benefit number one is one of the benefits that I find leaders, CEOs everywhere are like, yes, I need this, which is productivity. Of course, this is a huge benefit, but how, why, I got you. According to research, a more multicultural urban environment actually makes U.S. citizens, generally speaking, not even just in the work context, more productive. And that's a really, really interesting phenomenon that I wanted to dig into you with dig into with you, excuse me, today, because diversity, basically what's happening is it's creating two conditions that are known to improve our productivity. So what are those two conditions? Knowledge sharing and healthy conflict. Let's break those down. Knowledge sharing. So when it comes to diverse teams, we basically are experiencing a compounded pool of experience and knowledge from which everyone can draw, right? So let me give you an example here. My family is full of artists, right? And uh, when none of us are like super professional or famous, but we do all have the artistic tendencies. So to give you an example here, let's use my own family. So my sister, let's say she is just, and she actually is, is famous for her graphic design capabilities. My mother is a sculptor. My grandmother was a oil painter. I was a charcoal uh, sketcher. I don't even know if that's the real phrase for it. I draw. And my little brother is a musician, right? Okay, so there's a vast degree of... Uh, artistic capability going on. And what could be really interesting is to get us all in a room, give us an art project that doesn't really have many bounds or limitations to it, and kind of see how we can take all of our different experiences and draw from each of them to create something new. I would imagine it would be a mixed media masterpiece, right? So literally, we are sharing these experiences to take a holistic approach to creating something. So take that analogy, translate it to our teams. We can see how when different people come with different vantage points, different views on how things can be done, how things should be done, what they've seen in the past, what they've done, uh, you know, working in this industry versus that industry, we have have a lot more data basically to pull from to really give us a little bit more to bring to the table as a team. It's a beautiful thing. 
Now, the second condition we just talked about was healthy conflict. So let's break that one down a little bit. Basically, everything has a flip side. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So due to having all of those different perspectives and experiences at the table, diverse teams are absolutely more likely to have conflicting experiences and opinions, right? So again, let's go back to our imaginary art project. Me with my, you know, modality being charcoal sketching versus my mother, who's really great at sculpting and working with clay, we may have vastly different opinions on you know, what's possible for whatever this magical art project we're doing is. And so while that could go negative with some unhealthy conflict, we're focusing on the positive right now. And so what this could do is actually lead us to talking it out and coming up with something that's a little bit more creative, a little bit more outside of the box. Now, when it comes to our teams in real life and in business, of course, this may lead us to talking about some vulnerable or even potentially triggering topics. Now, while conflict is never I mean for me I'm a little bit conflict diverse I will own that so while it is never truly fun it can absolutely be healthy and open up the floor for learning and continued growth all of which wrap it back up leads us to productivity All right, so now that you're thoroughly convinced on productivity, let's talk about, honestly, this may be my personal favorite benefit, which is creativity. Oh, yeah. So I don't know if you've ever liked that very middle school, almost mean girls vibes where everyone kind of wanted to look and act and think the same, right? There's like the spirit of conformity that people naturally try to lean towards. And that is the absolute opposite of what we want, right? We don't want those mean girl vibes. We don't want the carbon copies of one another because cloning ourselves honestly is not the answer. What happens whenever everyone on the team comes to the table with the same perspective, the same experiences, is we are only reinforcing blind spots, right? If literally, if I took you and made five carbon copies of you and called that your team, what the heck would y'all get done in a day? For me, mm, that would not be cute, right? Like I am the visionary. I have a lot of big ideas. I need help and support on execution and follow through. And so if I was just creating carbon copies of myself and my own company, Our follow through game, our execution game would be super, super weak. We do not want to reinforce those blind spots. There's lots of research out there on this topic, and some of it does literally specifically tell us that creativity and innovation have been consistent in showing the value of exposing individuals to experiences with multiple perspectives and worldviews. So it's literally the combination of these various perspectives and novel ways that results in new ideas, quote unquote, popping up, right? That's why diverse businesses were found to be 1.7 times more likely to be innovation leaders in their market, okay? Again, opposite of mean girl vibes, opposite of cloning ourselves and creating carbon copies that reinforce our blind spots. It's literally about inviting in that nuance of multiple perspective into our company. I will say it till I'm blue from the face, diversity drives creativity, period. All right, so we are saving the last, definitely not the least, and it is profit. No surprise here, profit absolutely matters to many of us. And when we're expanding in our team, investing in tech, funding new projects, like all of this is literally made possible by our profit. But did you know when they look at the numbers, literally when they look at these numbers, it was the companies with diverse teams that were actually achieving greater profitability than their counterparts. I find that super interesting and some people find it a little bit surprising because if you remember earlier, we talked about diversity has this interesting phenomenon of yes, improving productivity, but by way of increasing conflict, right? Now we leaned into the topic of healthy conflict. Of course, some unhealthy conflict always comes with the territory. And so people tend to find that really, really surprising because they're like, wow, I would think That with the quote unquote distraction of conflict, that would actually reduce our productivity, negatively impacting our profit. But we actually see the opposite to be true. Like if your team can handle healthy, healthy conflict, 
that prof that productivity, excuse me, and that profit definitely goes up. Now, there are three other little reasons that research has shown us. So I want to share those with you real quick. Okay, so from a client perspective, there's this uh, phenomenon called affinity bias, which is basically like as human beings, we like to connect with other people who feel similar, which is so ironic considering that we're talking about diversity and the total opposite of that. But bear with me here. Long story short, we want our teams to also be reflective of the communities that we are serving, right? And so by having a diverse team, you are basically increasing the likelihood that your client, your customer base is going to have a an energy, a personality, a spirit, right? Like let's get a little boo here, that they feel more connected to amongst your team. Now, even if you are the only person that's client facing, this can still come through again with that with that little bit of woo. This can still come through energetically by having someone on your team who shares a perspective and can make sure that that perspective is infused in some of the ways that you guys are kind of moving through this world. So I thought that one was kind of interesting. It's something that a lot of people don't think about when they think about profit. But yeah, people like to connect and we like to give people money who share similarities. And so your team just kind of adds a little bit of dimension and complexity to what your company brings to the table, basically. All right. Another one, speaking of your team, is really attracting top talent. Diverse teams, bottom line, tend to attract top talent and top talent obviously leads to better business and better business leads to increased profits. I feel like it's kind of self-explanatory. And so once we have that top talent, those A players, this diverse group of thought and experience coming to the table, our decision making improves. Yes. So there is actual research that shows that diverse teams make better decisions faster. Okay, so again, like, let's go back to that conversation around conflict. We still got some conflict thrown in there. But the decision that gets made in the end is a lot better. Right. And and obviously that gives a major advantage over competitors, which leads to better results. And ding, 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 you got it more profit. All right, my friends. So what do you think? We have covered the top three benefits of having a diverse team, our productivity, our creativity, and our profit. I am so curious about your take on this. I would die to be able to hear some of your stories around how bringing those diverse perspectives and backgrounds and experiences to the table really did challenge the way that you've shown up as a leader and improve the overall functioning of your team. As you go about leading and living in the world, I want you to continue to think about your own company. Is it diverse? And if it's looking a little bit too much like a mean girl situation where we all wear pink on Wednesdays, and what are you going to do to change that? All right, my friend, I hope this episode left you with a couple of gems and with some things to think about and really, really take action on. I will see you on the next episode of Tide Pod. Thank you.